Welcome to the Mom Owned and Operated Podcast, the podcast about moms and for moms, where we have candid conversations about running a business, raising a family, and remembering ourselves. I'm your host, Rita Suzanne, a single mom of four, digital strategist, and provider of no-nonsense business strategies and tactics. Hey everyone, it's Rita Suzanne. This is a special day on Mom Owned and Operated. After 50 fantastic guest interviews, I'm stepping up and I'm taking on my very first solo show. So you know that I love diving into topics that matter to you most. So I sent out an email and asked on social media what everyone would love to hear about and The responses were clear. It was all about branding, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Did you know that a consistent brand can actually increase your revenue by 23%? That's a major jump. So today we're going to unpack exactly how you, as a mom business owner, can build a memorable brand that attracts clients and sets you apart. I'm a big believer in taking action. So we're going to do that today and we're going to create some real change. Instead of just talking about theory, I'm going to give you action steps in order to build your own memorable brand today. So first, let's talk about the first element of building your memorable brand. It's all about your brand's purpose. So what is a brand purpose? It's the core of your business. It's the heart. It's your reason for doing what you do, aside from making money, obviously. Um, For example, my purpose at Mom Owned and Operated is to empower mom business owners to build a thriving business without sacrificing time for yourself or your family. When I started this podcast, I was in the midst of a huge personal struggle that resulted in an amazing transformation, in part because of this podcast. I have been running my business for about five years, and my business was having its best year. But then in January of 2020, I discovered that my husband, who I had been married to for less than a year, was cheating on me. Two weeks later, my sister passed away unexpectedly. I was devastated all around. In March of 2020, COVID restrictions kicked in, right? And by May, I had been, I had filed for divorce and for custody of my two nieces, leaving me to be a single mom of four, who are now four teenagers, by the way, Um, I then completely isolated myself. I think for the first time in my life, I actually experienced um, real depression. And so because of that, I had isolated myself from all of my friends, whether they were online, local, um, just everyone, really, even my, my own family. And my business started to struggle because of it. But then in January of 2021, I started this podcast and it helped me to rediscover my purpose. It helped me to kind of reevaluate my life and my business because the whole intention of the podcast was so that I could talk to other mom business owners and really find out like, how are they doing all of the things? And I say that because I was struggling. I was struggling so hard to do even the most basic things. Um, I would get up and get dressed and then I would get right back in bed. And I really wouldn't uh, do too much outside of that. And um, so starting the podcast actually helped me to reevaluate everything because I got to listen to the stories of other moms and talk to them and reconnect with others. And it helped me to figure out what my purpose was in my life and in my business. So it is critical that you have your own brand purpose, right? People always say like, 
what is your why? Why are you doing the thing that you do? And this is your brand purpose. It keeps you focused and helps you stay on track with doing what you really ultimately want to do. So how do you find out your brand purpose? Here's what I would like for you to do. I want you to ask yourself these questions. What problem does your business solve for your ideal client? Next, what positive change do you want for your business to make in people's lives? I want you to think beyond the specific products or services that you offer. What is the big goal or the big change that you want your business to make? Then I encourage you to take those answers and then kind of develop your own brand purpose statement. That way you can go back to it. You can revisit it and it'll guide your decisions and keep you motivated, especially during those tough times, right? Like, um, you know, specifically what I, my example. So purpose anchors your brand internally, but consistency is how the world sees you. So let's dive into your second element, which is brand recognition. And this is something that I love to talk about. It's a, it's a very hot topic. I see others who focus uh, um, on some aspects of branding, talking about your brand messaging. And that is a piece of your brand recognition. But my favorite part of it is brand consistency. I mean, they do go hand in hand, but I think consistency is the most important aspect of it. But we're going to talk about both in this aspect of your uh, your brand's recognition. Your brand is more than just a logo. Like I've been saying that for years. You can have the most amazing logo in the world, but it's not your entire, it's not the entirety of your brand. Okay. But your visual, your visuals, staying consistent in what you put out is important. Your visuals are things like your logo, your color, your fonts, and your web design. And then let's talk a little bit about your messaging, right? Your messaging are, is how you can, you convey your brand on all platforms. So it's the words that you use across social media and on your website and even inside of your emails. So it's all about how you're saying things and what it it appear, you know, how it looks. So I'm always telling my clients to stay consistent with their brand colors and fonts and, and, things of that nature, right? So let me give you an example. I've been using Canva for creating images for a while because it's easy for my team to use as well. I can go in there, create a template, and then it's easy for my team to go in there and actually make images for me, especially for this podcast. But uh, when I rebranded recently, I updated one of my main fonts it's not available in Canva. I guess I could um, upload it to Canva, but I haven't been doing that. And I've been using Adobe again. And Adobe created a platform that's very similar to Canva called Express. And I have to say, there are some aspects of Express that I actually love more than Canva. And it has the same abilities in some ways, but I'll have to record a training on on it soon, but I digress. Anyways, um, I started using Express so that I could stay consistent with my brand visuals. And obviously, I've been an Adobe user for years, and I love it. And so I wanted to kind of check out what their, their comparable offer was so that I could see if I... Um, you know, maybe if I would leave Canva and just start using Express as my primary. Anyways, let's circle back around to brand messaging and think about the tone and the language that you use when you're communicating to your audience. And so, for instance, I like to say that my brand, this is how I, this is how I describe my brand messaging overall. When, um, 
the things that I like to put out are professional and yet still a little bit sassy. So I like to have a little bit of wit and sass in my brand, but I like to remain professional um, as well. So I don't want it to feel anything else other than like professional, educational, a little bit of wit and sass because I'm a little bit of a spitfire, but I don't, you know, don't want my brand to be completely, I still want to be taken seriously, right? So those are kind of the words that I use to describe my own brand messaging. But let's talk about you for a second. Let's talk about what what you can do in order to, what actions can you take for your own brand and the consistency. So ask yourself, do you have two to three main brand colors? If not, I want you to quickly research color psychology and then think about, do those color choices match the emotion that you want your brand to evoke? Um, Also, I want to tell you, when I first started branding about 10 years ago, one of my favorite books that I got into was this book I'm going to recommend. If If you're into these type of things, this is the book I would recommend. It's called How to Style Your Brand by Fiona Humberstone. Okay, so if you are really into stuff like that, that's the book I would recommend. It's all about, um, you know, color psychology and things of that nature as well. So the next question I would have you ask yourself is, is your brand voice professional and authoritative? Is it friendly and relatable? Um, Think about those things and make sure that your messaging is consistent and it aligns with your target audience's expectations. So, um, you know, obviously I've been probably preaching from the rafters about uh, target audience for years. It is probably to me one of the most, if not the most important aspect of your brand is really determining your target audience. Um, But Let's tap into what makes your brand unique. This is where your brand personality shines. So what's your brand's personality, right? Think of it as the overall vibe that people get from your business. It's shaped by your story, your values, and even the unique approach you use to what you offer. Oftentimes, when I talk to clients or other people, they mention the struggle to determine what makes them different from everyone else. Like, but that's an important aspect of your brand personality. And oftentimes, they'll compare themselves to maybe their competition and look at them and say they look like they have it all together. Um, Or even looking at the other person's credentials might make them feel. Um, that they can't compete with them, or, you know, maybe they feel like their credentials are not as impressive. And I want to tell you, don't let that hold you back. I taught myself everything I need to know about designing websites, online marketing, branding, SEO, all of the things that I needed, systems, processes, all of that in order to run my own business. I taught myself those things, obviously, one step at a time. One client would ask for something, and then I would dive deep into that thing. So I don't have the credentials of maybe some designers uh, or some branding experts have. However, I have the experience of 10 years, and I don't let my lack of like formal education stop me from knowing that I know what I'm talking about and I don't want that to hold you back either. So you are you and your experiences are what make you different. So keep that in mind. Um, discovering your unique value proposition or your UVP is going to help you create your confident brand personality. So let's let's do this exercise. This is a little bit of a longer exercise. So um, what I want you to do is picture your favorite customer. Now describe them in five words, like five adjectives. 
These are the words that are key to identifying your purse, your brand personality, right? But if you struggle to visualize, visualize your ideal client, let's, let's try um, a different exercise. This one, I think you might like a little bit better, right? It's called, if my brand were, right? It's a, if my brand were exercise. So if my brand were a person, who would they be? Maybe they would be a trusted mentor, a stylish friend, you know, something along those way or along those lines. If my brand were a car, what kind would it be? Would it be a reliable minivan, a sleek sports car, you know, on and on the list, you know, fill in your adjectives from there. Um, if my brand were a place, where would it be? Would it be a cozy coffee shop? Would it be a bustling uh, mall or city center of sorts? What, where would it be? And it's interesting because I use this um, adjectives exercise with my clients and I, I do it in a different way, but this is a, this is a good alternative uh, because I obviously can't show you what I'm doing, but I use this exercise. And one thing that we do is we find um, the adjectives that best describe your brand and that helps create the tone, which then in turn help create the visuals that you have for your brand. And when you are doing that, you take those adjectives and then you put them into Pinterest. And then inside of Pinterest, you search for the visual equivalent of those adjectives. And then you put them together in a board. And then that creates the overall, it, it helps you to or it helps someone like me look at that board and determine the actual um, color palette and fonts and style of the person, I guess the personality, so that we can create color palettes and stuff for you. So my point is, one of the examples that I always give is about an open door, right? If somebody says open, like they want one of their adjectives is open um, or inviting or something of that nature. And then I always say to them, if you were inside of Pinterest and you, you're looking for that adjective, I would say, look at an open door, adjective, open door, right? And it's inviting and it helps them to create that. Um, because a lot of people, it's like, how do you find an adjective for a person who's inviting, right? Like we look at it from a different, different aspect. And um, now let's go back to the, if we were, um, if my brand were exercise, these comparisons are going to help you create those visual associations that are going to help you tap into your brand personality. Just like I was describing in the Pinterest um, adjective or exercise. So you can also list like five to seven core values that you're, you have in your business. Is it innovation, compassion, sustainability, you know, things like that. So you can list these other, um, other values and those could act as guideposts as well for you to develop a matching brand personality. Um, some other things that you could do to create your brand personality is a competitor analysis and then gather feedback from your existing clients if you have them. Um, determining your brand personality and UVP, your unique value proposition, can take a bit of reflection, but just keep revisiting it and then you're going to get the best results. Um, okay. So those are the three elements of a memorable brand. And also, I want you to remember that building a brand is going to help you attract your ideal clients. It's going to help you fuel your growth. And it takes these three things, right? Brand purpose, brand consistency, and brand personality. And these are all aspects of your brand strategy, I feel like your brand strategy is way more important than your brand identity, although they work together as a team. So just keep those in mind. If you know your brand strategy, then you are able to convey everything else to the world.
You can find all of these questions and these exercises in the show notes for today's episode. I'd love it if you'd share one action that you're going to take this week from this podcast and tag me on social media. You can find me at Branding with Rita on all platforms. And I just want to say thank you for listening to this first solo episode of Mom Owned and Operated. It's been a pleasure. And there you have it. I want to encourage you to remember that being a mom who runs her own business is not easy. We all struggle, but just keep moving forward and don't forget to make time for yourself. As moms, we are usually the first thing to go to the bottom of the list. If your business is overwhelming you and you need real solutions, not just some sugar-coated suggestions, apply to work with me at ritasuzanne.com apply.